Our third speaker in this, uh, in this forum is Steve Hollish. Steve's a senior hydrogeologist, the Oak Ridge's Moraine Groundwater Management Program, as you can see in the bio. In 2001, Steve uh, moved on to the Conservation Authorities Moraine Coalition, which consists of the nine conservation authorities with uh, jurisdiction on the Oak Ridge's Moraine. And in this position, he's primarily focused on the York Peel Durham Toronto Groundwater Program aimed at understanding and managing the groundwater resources across the Oak Ridge Moraine area. Steve served on the Technical Experts Committee for the Province's Source Water Protection Initiative, also served as a Council of Canadian Ac Academies panel member, helped write the 2009 report for the federal government titled The Sustainable Management of Groundwater in Canada. It's quite a document. Steve's also a past president of the Canadian chapter of the International Association of Hydrogeologists. Steve, welcome. Where is he? Oh, there you are. Thanks, Rob. And uh, thanks, Kortha and Skugog, for organizing the conference and inviting me to speak here today. So I, um, as some of the others have mentioned, I was kind of unaware of the magnitude of this issue and how I was going to relate to the crowd and what I was going to bring here. And um, as, as a result, I started off with my... F oh, I, I got to do this. Right. Um, my first slide, I, I, I kind of thought, you know, this is clean fill and people are moving clean fill to uh, sites and it's not really an issue. And, and often, groundwater, being a hydrogeologist, I'm going to talk a little bit more about, you know, the science side and groundwater today. But quite often in these large, uh, large site investigations, uh, people have concerns with noise, dust, litter, all the other things that you've talked about and heard about today. And uh, frequently, though, it turns out that it's the groundwater boogeyman that everyone focuses on. And if you Google uh, boogeyman, you get some interesting images here that I pulled up yesterday. But really, the uncertainty, the, the reason that groundwater is, is, is fingered as, <clears throat> as one of the issues that, um, that people cling on to and, and, and focus on is the uncertainty underneath the ground. So really, there's a lot of uncertainty. And this quote was one of my favorites that that speaks to some of that. So an aquifer is a mysterious, magical, poorly defined area beneath the surface of the earth that either yields or withholds vast or lesser quantities of standing or flowing water, the quantity and quality of which is dependent on who is describing it and how much money may be at stake. So, <laughs> so quite often you get a room of hydrogeologists and everyone is dancing around and throwing out their angles on, on what the flow system is, and that is really um, the crux of uh, many of these large uh, investigations. So I, I um, just put up a, a number of these large fill sites that Carmel actually um, brought to my attention. You can see they, you know, they're all over the place, as we've already heard today, stretching right from the escarpment on the, on the west right over to uh, the east, many of them on the moraine, many of them off of the moraine, but they're all, they're all over the place. Um, Potential impacts on, on groundwater are many, and we've talked to them a little bit. Others have already talked to them, but groundwater quality is obviously an issue. Recharge rates, there hasn't really been much discussion on permeability of the soils, but if you do bring, uh, as Josh has mentioned, lower permeability materials onto the moraine, you can affect the recharge rates, and I know that Cloca and Gale have been looking at even micro-scale drainage. If you bring low permeability materials and affect the drainage, on a local scale, you could be affecting neighbors and so on. So a lot of, lot of issues around permeability that haven't really been addressed. And then uh, you can affect the flow system. And again, if you have you know, s connections between your surface water, groundwater, there could be issues uh, related, related to that. So a number of issues. So one of the things that um, struck me this morning was uh, the formation of our program, this groundwater management program that I'm being fortunate enough to oversee for the last number of years, in many ways has a similar roots to what I'm hearing today. So back in the 1990s, there were many municipalities, local groups, and everyone was talking about groundwater and how poorly we're managing it, how poorly we understand it. The province really wasn't providing great direction in terms of groundwater. And so what happened is the municipalities, York, Peel, Durham, City of Toronto, got together, said we need to really understand groundwater better. The conservation authorities on the moraine said, yeah, we're not addressing groundwater in a meaningful way. <clears throat> and we've also, you see the logos on the bottom there, the, the province, Ontario, and the Geological Survey of Canada we've also interacted with. So we've had relations between all three levels 
of government in our program. So what I thought I would do briefly here is just give you an overview of what we're doing in our groundwater management program and how it might be useful to look at some of these uh, large-scale fill sites. <clears throat> so our study area is quite broad. It covers a, a big part of southern Ontario, stretching really from the Credit River on the west to the Trent River Conservation Authority on the east. And over the years with source water protection coming, coming forward in the last number of years, we've increased our database uh, just to cover the source water protection areas um, up, to the, up to the north. So we've expanded you know, well beyond the Oak Ridges Moraine itself. Um, there's three main pieces that we're focused on in our program. One is data. So largely, and, and you've heard about uncertainty in data, but, or, or lack of management of data. So one of the things that struck us early on is that really as a, as a province, we've done a very poor job of managing uh, environmental data. Decisions are being made and there really isn't the data to support it. So we put a strong effort on collecting data, assembling many data sets together. So the MOE water well records, uh, consultant boreholes, geotechnical records from many different sources, the Ontario Geological Survey, oil and gas wells, everything that was dealing with the subsurface has come into our database. And we've got it very well organized. We've attached pumping rates to well records. We've attached permits to well records, uh, chemistry to well records. So everything that you would want to have in a database management system is, is what we've developed in our, in our, in our project here. Uh, we've also had a focus on geology. We've really tried to take a, a crack at identifying all the aquifers and aquitards, the, the units that are low permeability in the subsurface, why they are where they are, how they've been deposited, how the permeability changes, and so on. And then under, with an understanding of the geology, then we move to understanding the groundwater systems, doing modeling, uh, looking at long-term trends in water levels and chemistry and so on, water budgets and, and the like. So three big pieces. And, and this uh, study that I was uh, fortunate enough to work on over, uh, over the last number of years resulted in a, a it was a, it was a, the federal government was being asked, um, or was asking through the Canadian Academies, the, the Council of Canadian Academies <clears throat> is, a, is like the, a, a science think tank for the federal government. And they were asked what is needed to have more effective management across, across the country. And so really this pyramid speaks to what we thought as a panel was needed. And our program, this program across the Oak Ridges Moraine, really um, follows this to a, to a T. So on the bottom you see that database management and under, and, and is, is, a, is the key pillar of anything that goes forward. Yeah, and then you understand the geology second, start to move into understanding the groundwater systems, uh, do modeling and, and more, uh, you know, more sophisticated techniques and all that leads into making effective decisions. So this is one of the, one of the key figures that came out of that report. And this is just a kind of a sneaky roadmap that I put up sometimes that, uh, you know, you spend some money, spend some time, and it's sneaky because you're always moving forward. You can't go backwards in this, in this graph, so you're kind of always show progress. But really down in the bottom, you take your data, you understand your data, you do a regional thinking, so you understand the groundwater flow system at a bigger scale, and then you move into local scale studies with pumping tests and watershed studies, take that information, reintegrate it back into the regional scale, and so on, you move forward with your understanding. The whole time you're speaking to planners, making sure that the science is linked up with the policy and planning um, pieces, and all the data that you collect goes into the database. So this is really our, um, a roadmap for the, for the entire project. And really now what we're starting to do is really think of it in, a, in this knowledge management uh, perspective. So really, I think what we've failed to do is, is, is effectively in environmental studies, capture some of the, the previous studies and previous information. And you see people walking out of conservation authorities with 50 years of information on the watershed. And, and I don't think we've really captured a lot of that. And so we're, tr we're trying to, in our program, um, without being morons, as, as the Dilbert comic refers to, um, capture and, and manage some of this information as we move forward. So getting back to uh, the topic of today, I just thought, you know, how, how could some of the, uh, the information that we've assembled be applied or be utilized at some of these sites that, uh, that people are interested in? So I just took a couple of these, and I'll talk to them briefly. 
but the Tottenham site, you could see here, I've just plotted up all the, all the wells, boreholes, uh, climate stations, stream flow stations that are in our database where they lie with respect to that site. Uh, this is just on the ground surface, so the reds are topographically elevated areas, greens and blues are lower topographic, so you can see you know, how water might move on the surface of the, of the, um, the ground in the, in the area. Um, you could see I, I had two, uh, two red lines there, so you can do cross sections in this area. Uh, when you look at cross sections, you can see the different units in the subsurface, you can see the well records and what the geology that the driller encountered. Uh, up top you see a blue line there showing the water table very close to ground surface. Uh, the oak ridges of sands and gravels are right at surface in this case, so if there were contaminated fill uh, materials moving onto this site, they would readily move into the water table and through that sands and, sand and gravel aquifer. And just another section uh, looking east-west. Uh, so very quickly you can pull this stuff up, uh, assess a site from a regional perspective, you know, not, not very locally looking at, you know, minor sand or clay lenses or anything like that, but just to get a broad perspective on how deep the water table is, what kind of materials at surface and so on. And then you can look at the water table, so uh, the contours don't show up all that well here, but this is a map of the water table looking at the static water levels in all the wells, and you can see in general the water would be moving from Mount Wolf in the south there, uh, towards the north and, and moving towards the stream. So, so very quickly you'd get an assessment, oh yeah, this is what, this is what we're dealing with. Uh, Stouffville, this is another interesting site, and uh, I thank the region of York, uh, Scott Lister and, and Tanya Camfern Martin, yeah, provide me a couple slides on this site, but this is on Bloomington Road. They were dealing with a site, uh, old quarry site, that was right adjacent to their municipal wells. So the wells are sitting, um, this doesn't seem to work. Right, right in, the, in the forest there, in the middle of that slide. And the, the, the site is just to the north, that triangular site there. And I just you know, grabbed a number of, um, of, site, of, of Google map images over the years from 2002 to 2009. You can see some very, you know, activities on the site that have changed. Uh, you know, there's a pond in the north along Bloomington Road that vanishes over the years and so on as it's being filled in. Um, <clears throat> Some of the oh geez, I can't, uh, yeah some of the some of the issues that um, York Region identified. So th this is a successful site actually that um, they were they wanted to fill in this site on Bloomington Road. Uh, the township recognized that the municipal supply was, wells were right there. They contacted the region. The operator was on board, and everything seemed to go very reasonably successful here. So you can see the capture zones uh, down on the on the right hand side there are. Uh, certainly the site is located right next to the wells and within the capture zones. Uh, the wells are reasonably shallow and there was a you know, large number, large amount of soil coming in. Um, so the, uh, the region wanted to do extensive groundwater monitoring, uh, you know, look at residential well, wells within 500 meters, they wanted on-site monitoring wells. Upgradient, downgradient, they would approve, the region would, uh, the design of the monitoring wells and so on. Um, <clears throat> I think those are the key points there. Um, and then at the end of the day, so they had, a, they had a system to monitor all the trucks that were coming in, ticketed system, all the best management practices that we've heard about were really applied at this site. And so uh, at the end of the day, they had a complaint response system. Uh, they found some soils that had high uh, sodium absorption ratios that they ended up saying, okay, they had to be buried so the plants wouldn't be affected in the long run. They had a plan to reforest the site, so it was a good news story from a wellhead protection point of view that the, uh, the operator was going to reforest the large, a large part of the site. Um, they found some false, false positives for cadmium in some of their monitoring, so again, they had a system to retest. Uh, strong procedures to make sure everything was done properly. And then, um, you know, at the end of the day, the groundwater quality has remained unchanged, so it's been fairly successful. Um, large part of the site has been filled now, and with the reforestation, they think it's a positive for the, for the municipal supply well. And they got a better relationship with the town. So these fill sites can be successful, as Glenn mentioned earlier. Um, and just again, turning back to our, our data set, so there's the Stouffville site. You can see the ground surface in this case, uh, all the wells that are available. Um, and then looking at cross sections, again, in this case, there's a little bit of till at surface, so 
a little bit of pr better protection for the aquifer. The orange is the Oak Ridge Marine Aquifer again. And um, again, east-west cross-section showing similar thing. Did water table a little bit deeper and uh, some till soils protecting uh, the surface here. And then I think quickly, um, oops, did I go? Oh, and the water table. Here's the water table map. So again, just showing the static water levels, water moving you know, from the Oak Ridge Moraine in the north down to the south. And again, you would uh, design your monitoring program appropriately knowing the flow system. And then Green Bank, I did the similar kind of thing, just showing the site here. Uh, looking at the ground surface, the topography drops off into the river valleys on the uh, right-hand side there. And a couple of cross-sections through the site. In this case, there's uh, very little Oak Ridge's marine materials. The New Market Till tills right at surface, so reasonably well protected. Um, you know, the deeper aquifers are with that till unit. Water table, again, a little bit deeper below ground surface and a west-east cross-section. So, and again, the water table showing groundwater, shallow groundwater moving into the, into the stream valleys. So I think, I think that just, just showing with that, with, 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 with what we've developed, there's a um, you know, large opportunity to use the information that we've compiled. A lot of modeling studies we've also done on the, on the, in the area. This is a map showing the recharge rates, so you could look at you know, whether your fill site is on large recharge or low recharge uh, soils and so on. Um, and then I just ended actually with this one slide showing uh, the East Gwillimberry um, example that Carmela talked about had a, 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 a report provided by TerraProbe um, last year, I think it was, and many of the things they recommend here you know, plotting, plotting the wells within a kilometer, doing the cross sections, uh, doing pre-development pre, uh, sampling and so on. All the best management practices are really in that document. And uh, as Carmela said, the uh, East Gwillimberry bylaw that came out is pretty, um, is pretty uh, successful. And uh, I guess that's it, thanks. So you want to transport the fill, not the grief. Right?